The House of Representatives has not had a speaker for 20 days. And today, on day 20, for the second time in three weeks, House Republicans met behind closed doors for a speaker candidate forum. House Republicans heard from nine members pitching themselves to be the one to take the gavel. Of those nine, seven voted to overturn the results of the 2020 presidential election based on Donald Trump's election lies just hours after a violent pro-Trump mob stormed the Capitol on January 6th. After tonight's closed-door meeting, one of the seven members who voted to overturn the election results, Congressman Dan Muser, withdrew from the speaker's race. Donald Trump declined to endorse another speaker candidate today after his endorsement of Jim Jordan led to Jordan becoming a three-time loser in, less, in last week's speaker's vote. Republican Whip Tom Emmer was one of two members who voted to certify President Joe Biden's win, who is running for speaker. But Congressman Emmer supported a Texas lawsuit seeking to invalidate the election results in four states. And because this is still Donald Trump's Republican Party, Despite his multiple indictments and multiple losses at the ballot box, Congressman Emmer called Donald Trump asking for his endorsement. Donald Trump, who has been indicted twice for his efforts to overturn the 2020 election, was in New Hampshire today to register for the state's presidential primary, where he said this about Congressman Emmer, and I quote, Well, I think he's my biggest fan now because he called me yesterday and he told me, I'm your biggest fan. So I don't know about that. Congressman Emmer responded by posting, quote, Thank you, Mr. President. If my colleagues elect me Speaker of the House, I look forward to continuing our strong working relationship. Our next guest defended the Capitol against Trump's angry mob and knows firsthand the threat Donald Trump poses to democracy. Officer Harry Dunn writes in his new book, Standing My Ground, a Capitol Police officer's fight for accountability and good trouble after January 6th. Officer Dodden writes, quote, that's why January 6th hurts so much. It was a frightening wake up call that our democracy, this thing we hold so precious, can be taken from us if we don't protect it. My fellow officers and I gave it our all on January 6th. We stood our ground and because we did, our democracy is still standing. And I still, st and I still stand and I continue to fight it is why I testified along with three other officer, fellow officers before the January 6th committee so we can get to the bottom of what happened that day and what led to it. It is why I testified in two trials of Oath Keepers to make sure their leaders were convicted and sentenced to prison. I speak out not because I want something for me, but because I want accountability. Joining us now is Officer Harry Dunn, who helped defend the Capitol and our democracy during the January 6th attack. Officer Dunn, thank you very much for coming to The Last Word. Thanks for having me on. So House Republicans still don't have a, a speaker, and every candidate is an election denier. You're still working at the Capitol, uh, at the House. When you look at what's happened with Republican um, leaders, election deniers who've survived and thrived, to now shocking efforts to defend the convicted January 6th criminals to say <coughs> what happened wasn't that bad. How do you feel? Well, glad to be here, but when it comes to the process that's going on now in the House to pick a speaker, that has nothing to do with my personal views about... That doesn't deter me from doing my job. Republicans, Democrats, independents, we protect those members of Congress no matter what their views and what their beliefs are. Um, as an individual, it's a little frustrating that anybody, especially an elected member of Congress, the governors, state representatives, could uh, downplay what happened that day as not serious or not that bad, and we need to move on from it. I, it's a dark day in history, and it will continue to be that. Mm -hmm. um, I want you to listen to what now ousted Speaker, <clears throat> Speaker of the House Kevin McCarthy said um, seven days after January 6th. Listen to this. The president bears responsibility for Wednesday's attack on Congress by mob rioters. He should have immediately denounced the mob when he saw what was unfolding. These facts require immediate action by President Trump. Accept his share of responsibility. Quell the brewing unrest.
and ensure President-elect Biden is able to successfully begin his term. Now, the January 6th committee ended uh, once um, Kevin McCarthy became speaker. I mean, you went to, the, uh, to many of those, those hearings. You met with Kevin McCarthy in 2021. Did you find those remarks that we just listened to on the House floor sincere? Well, what he said, I couldn't agree with more. Um, the actions afterwards, uh, that's, I, I don't know how you can say what you said in those videos right there and still, I don't know if Speaker McCarthy, former Speaker McCarthy has said those things. I, I don't know um, about not, it, it not being a serious day. I always believe that he did, but the actions that came afterwards, um, one can question what really was the motive behind those statements. So, mm -hmm. um, you, you didn't just attend the hearings sitting in the background. You testified. Yeah. Um, I want to play some of your testimony before the January 6th committee. If a hitman is hired and he kills somebody, the hitman goes to jail. But not only does the hitman go to jail, but the person who hired them does. There was an attack carried out on January 6th, and a hitman sent them. I want you to get to the bottom of that. Now, you touch on this in your book, uh, but what does accountability for Donald Trump look like? You know, that's one of the, the questions that I get asked with the most. Like, I've been fighting for accountability. Well, what does accountability look like? And I guess it's a deterrent to make sure that whoever did it or anything never does it again. It deters them for doing it, from doing it again. The problem is that Donald Trump um, doesn't think he did anything wrong. And, you know, we're still moving towards, you know, the finish line with the trial coming up. It's starting in March, uh, March 4th, I believe. Um, so if he still doesn't believe he did anything wrong, whether he's convicted or not, is that really accountability? I, I, don't, I don't really know. But I don't think that this, this idea an idea created January 6th, whether it was Donald Trump or another individual, these, those people that were there thought that they were right. Um, and that's the problem. It's an ideology that we have now. And how do you defeat an ideology, whether you put a person in jail or not, if they still believe that they're right, that's the problem at large still remains. Mm -hmm. Uh, Officer Dunn, you, you write in your book, and I want to quote, we need to talk about our trauma. Yes, you and me. The only difference between your January 6th trauma and mine is where we were when we experienced it. How are you dealing with the trauma of January 6th? So I, one thing, it wasn't just an attack on the individuals, officers who were there that day. Um, it was an attack on American democracy, and that encompasses all American citizens. And like I said, whether you were in Iowa, whether you were in Nebraska or in California, there was an attack there and there was some kind of trauma left on you. So how I'm dealing with it, writing the book was very mm -hmm. therapeutic for me. It was cathartic. It was, you know, I, a lot of emotions. And even talking about it now, um, it's still a feeling that I'd never thought before, I felt before. It comes back to me and I'm able to process it. So it's a, I'm dealing with it in a healthy way. Mm -hmm. I mean, I have to say, the many times we've met and talked, I've always been just sort of amazed by how cheery and, and positive you are, which probably says more about just your natural state of being, despite the, the trauma that you've, you've endured. But, you know, over the last few years, I think the American people have gotten a sort of a newfound respect for or appreciation for, for public service and the people who do it quietly and jump into action when all hell breaks loose. Uh, I'm just wondering, why do you do it, especially given what you've been through? So January 6th, before that, you know, I was always public service. It's, a, it's an honor to serve your country in some capacity. Um, but after January 6th and seeing how fragile democracy is and was, now I feel like it's more so a duty that we all have a role to play in defending in this country, whether you're an individual who works at Target. You, your, your role, your duty is to vote in these elections. My job is to protect the members of Congress so that they can fulfill their congressional responsibilities and obligations to, conti to continue to keep this 
experiment of democracy going on. So it's more like a duty now when I feel like I owe it to this country even more now because realizing how fragile that it is and that it was. Mm -hmm. And you, you are still doing the job and still seeing some of the same people who try to pretend that January 6th was just a but that's the thing. Day. So that's an, that's another thing, though. The end of those people have the right to believe that they have the right to believe that. And the citizens who have their duty is their job to hold those individuals accountable. So you see how it comes full circle. Mm -hmm. Everybody has a role to do that. Officer Harry Dunn, I say this every time you come on whatever show I'm doing. Thank you very much, not only for being on the show, but for your service. Thank you.